Welcome to the solution for question number four of the chapter nine problem solving set where the theme of this set is that we're focusing on reactions of alkynes. And in this particular video, we are going to be looking at the products of hydration reactions with alkynes. So we're going to start by taking our starting alkyne structure and reacting with uh, mercury sulfate and sulfuric acid catalyzed hydration. And also we're going to look at what would result from a hydroboration oxidation reaction of the same starting material to compare and contrast the regioselectivities of these two reactions. So first off, we're going to dive into hex one ion here. So we're going to draw hex one ion. Need to put our carbon carbon triple bond between position one and two, draw out our six carbon chain. And we'll react here in part number one to do our acid catalyzed hydration. And we do need to have water in there since we see it's hydration. So now in this reaction, what's going to happen anytime you have an alkyne reacting under these conditions with our mercury ion and sulfuric acid and water, what is going to happen is that we're going to follow Mark's rule to add H and OH across the carbon-carbon triple bond. So Mark's rule will indicate to us that the proton needs to add to the less alkyl substituted carbon, so our new proton needs to go here, and the hydroxy group needs to add here. No need to worry about any carbocation rearrangements or anything during any of these alkyne reactions. Carbocation rearrangements are not going to happen. So we'll go ahead and follow Mark's rule here to add our H and OH. So the hydroxy group is going to go right here and we will have a carbon-carbon double bond there. And keep in mind with these reactions, this type of structure that we've created is referred to as an enol because we have an alkene group that is directly bonded to an alcohol. And what happens with enols is that in most situations, they rapidly are going to tautomerize to the so-called keto form. Where the keto form is going to mean that the alcohol group becomes a carbonyl and this carbon-carbon double bond is no longer there because we've added a hydrogen over at this position number one. So the final product of these reactions are not generally going to be the enol product, but instead they're going to be so-called keto product. And I'm not going to go through the mechanism for transforming the enol form into the keto form here, since that's not the point of this question, but you should be aware of that mechanism and able to show the electron pushing arrows to illustrate how you would go from the enol form to the keto form. In this case, for just predicting the product of this reaction, we're taking the shortcut here and we're saying that we know that the enol always tautomerizes to the keto form. It's this type of constitutional isomer where we have moved electrons, but we've only moved one atom during the course of the transformation, and that the hydrogen has gone from being right here to the hydrogen moves over to here to make the keto form. So you're always going to be converting this enol, where we have an alkene directly bonded to hydroxy group, to a keto by taking the hydroxy group converting it into a carbonyl, and then we just get rid of that carbon-carbon double bond there because we've brought in a hydrogen out here, so that double bond is no longer needed to fill the octet. So that's going to be our reaction outcome if we react hex-1 ion with our hydration mixture under these acidic conditions. What if instead we do hydroboration oxidation? So I'm going to show a second reaction arrow here to indicate that we've taken the same starting structure and we've done hydroboration oxidation. Remember, hydroboration oxidation is where we do a hydroboration step with boring, BH3, and then oxidation typically with peroxide, H2O2, and base such as sodium hydroxide. So in this reaction, 
the difference between this and our earlier reaction in terms of the outcome is that this is going to go opposite Mark's rule to give addition of H and OH across our carbon-carbon triple bond here. So we've got opposite regioselectivity going on here depending upon which reagent we use. We're going to be placing the H and the OH in opposite positions. So top scenario, we followed Mark's rule. Bottom scenario, we go opposite Mark's rule, which means that we need to place our OH group in right here. So we have, in this bottom scenario, made an enol where we have followed um, the premise of going opposite Mark's rule to add H here and OH here. This enol intermediate, just like we saw up top, is rather unstable compared to the keto tautomer. And so what we'll do anytime we make an enol is go ahead and tautomerize to the keto. And we can accomplish that similarly to above by taking the hydroxy group, making that a carbonyl, and then just make your carbon chain like you have before. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons in our keto, six carbons in our enol, so we should be good to go here. And keep in mind, even though this is called the keto product, it's a little misleading because you might be thinking keto, ketone. This is an aldehyde in our, in our product here. So the keto product is just referring to the fact that we have the carbonyl group in the product. It can be either a ketone, as we saw up top here, or an aldehyde that we see as the functional group in that product. It really depends on exactly what the regioselectivity was of the reaction. In other words, where you added the hydroxy group to start with is going to dictate whether you make an aldehyde final product or a ketone final product. And when you're asked to list the final major organic products of these reactions, your final major organic product going to be these keto forms, not the enol form. The enol you could think of as an intermediate and route to the major keto product. The enol is not particularly stable. Keto is a lot more stable. And so that's going to be the product that dominates here. We're going to do the same sort of process for part B here. In part B, we're taking hex 3i. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my hex 3i starting material. And we'll react that with our first reagent, our mercury sulfate, sulfuric acid, and water. And following Mark's rule here, you actually don't have to really think about Mark's rule in this case because these are equally substituted and they are symmetrical within the molecule. And so it doesn't matter which one of those two you choose to put the H versus the OH on, you're going to end up with the same product one way or the other. If this was asymmetrical, meaning that this carbon chain was extended by a carbon or something like that, so that we didn't have equal carbon numbers on both sides here, you would end up with a mixture of two different constitutional isomer products, one that would have the hydroxy group here, the other that would have the hydroxy group over here. But since it's symmetrical, in this case, it doesn't matter which one of those picks up the proton. So we're going to go ahead and make our enol intermediate here, like so. Six carbon chain, enol group there, carbon number three. And then going ahead and tautomerizing to the keto form, as we do anytime we see an enol, it's safe to assume that we're going to tautomerize to the keto, convert that hydroxy group into our carbonyl, and that's going to give us our final keto product here, which would be a ketone functional group in this case. Then we'll do the same thing with our hydroboration oxidation, reacting with borane, followed by peroxide and sodium hydroxide. And in this case, the product that we're going to see resulting from the reaction of hydroboration oxidation relative to our acid catalyzed, mercury catalyzed hydration up top is actually going to be exactly the same because of the fact that the alkynes are equally substituted 
there's the same number of alkyl group bonded here versus here. That means that both of these strategies are going to lead to the same product. The situation in which they would lead to two different regioisomer products is when we have a terminal alkyne like this, where you have a different number of hydrogens at one carbon of the alkyne relative to the other. If both carbons of the alkyne are equally alkyl substituted, meaning they both have one alkyl group here, then you're going to get the same products resulting from either of these two types of reagents going on. So with that, we conclude our problem solving for chapter number nine, where we're looking here at converting the alkyne starting material into a final aldehyde or ketone product. This is a really useful way to take an al alkyne and convert it into an aldehyde or ketone. And as you will learn later on in your organic chem journey, um, particularly in organic two, there are lots of different reactions that aldehydes and ketones can undergo. And so that makes this particular reaction really useful for generating those aldehydes and ketones that can then be pushed further down the line toward creating molecules that have practical applications.